Good evening, everybody. It's your boy, Kentario, and I'm back again for another episode of Christ and Comic Books. And today, I'm looking to be a bit more personal. I want to be able to introduce myself to everybody on YouTube, to those that watch this channel, to those that support this channel. I would like to introduce myself. A little game I like to call Happy... Hi, my name is Kentario Adams. Um, and the way that I want to go about this is I want to just acknowledge how in this video I'm talking about how I'm a Christian we, how I'm a lover, how I'm black, and I'm basically going to be pretty blunt. Um, there's no trying to shape things to sound good and manipulation of my words. Um, I will be, of course, respectful, uh, but I'm just wanting to be open with the people. Uh, and a part of that, yes, is going to be because uh, with being open, there might be some more support that will be brought to this channel. But along with that, the purpose of this is also to tell you about who I am. And some of, one of the first things that I want to actually look at talking about, I want to go ahead and get this out the way. I'm not a politically swayed person. And what I mean by that is I'm currently not registered to vote. I currently don't associate with a political party. And I currently, you know, don't, don't voice as though I assign with one. Based off of what I believe, you would think that I align with conservative, although I will tell you I don't. Um, based off of, you know, some of the things that I hear from the Democratic side, you might think I'd sway with them, but I don't. I have no side. Um, there's one person named Ruslan. I'll definitely tag him in this uh, because I, I respect him and hopefully actually want to hear from him for the type of content that I do and it being for Christ. I, I hope he gets to check out my channel and to, to give me feedback on that. But I just want to say, as he says, I'm politically agnostic. I know there's political sides, but as far as having one, I really don't have a solid view. Um, I can definitely at least tell you this, that I don't like the stereotypical expectation that if you believe in Christ, then there must be some, then you must be a Republican. I don't like that view that because you're black, you must be Democratic. There's a lot of easy association going on there. Don't put me in that category. I also want to just clarify that I can't stand either side's radical viewpoints. Are we going to talk about that in this video? Absolutely not. If you want to know any of that type of content, Please leave a comment down uh, below as well as make sure you hit that subscribe button because if you're wanting to see it, I want you to get notification of it. Thank you for the support that you bring to this channel, Christ and Comic Books. Now, of course, I want to get into this next piece, of course, being a black guy. I want to just talk about that because, you know, with my childhood and growing up, I wasn't really uh, shaped in that manner. I was really brought up to focus on my faith. I was brought up to focus on Jesus Christ. And that's one of the main things that stands out for me about who I am, is that Christ is first, even before my skin color. Now, the thing with me saying that is, I don't deny that I am a black man, and I don't deny the struggles that black people have went through, even the struggles that some of black people go through today. But I don't allow those things to define me. I don't allow those things to restrict me, at least not in my mind and not in my heart. As far as how they operate out there, I can't 100% say yay or nay, because I have not experienced police brutality. I have not experienced uh, the level of racism that a lot of people are are expressing now today being that social media allows them that platform to express the, the struggles of racism. The N-word, my 100% view on that is, is that no one should be saying that word anymore. Okay, and I say that because of the unbalanced struggle where it's in one side it's offensive to hear it from them but on the other side it's cool as long as we say it to one another and nobody else say it unless you give someone permission but then you give someone permission and they say it at the wrong time they could get beat up ostracized um and even more so just excluded from society altogether you're seeing that on social media right now where someone calls someone an n-word lover and she is just outright getting attacked now addressing that holding her accountable sure but not forgiving her for it, that's another issue. Uh, you can say that you forgave someone, but based off of the resentment that you hold in your heart for them, shows that there's no true forgiveness. But let's not get stuck there. Uh, when we're looking at, you know, me as, as a black man, I grew up with, of course, you know, meeting other black people and, and befriending a lot of black people, uh, especially when I moved here where I'm at now. Um, I was actually rather excluded from the group I guess you could say I was considered the weird one out of everybody else and and they didn't think that I was fast or they didn't think I talked right you know because I, I my parents raised me to speak properly I'm being just upfront and blunt I was raised to speak properly so I speak that way 
and that came across as, as confusing for a lot of the people that I grew up with at the time. Um, and even more so, my mom raised me to be a gentleman, be respectful to women, treat women with respect, let them go first, open the door for them. And, and of course, I love women. That's another thing to completely point out. I'm in love with women. Women are a beautiful thing. I am so truly happy for the wife that I have. She is a beautiful white woman. I will acknowledge that and I have no shame in it and no one can tell me that that's a problem. But with me growing up with the, the love that I had for women and me respecting women, uh, I encountered where that was an issue for the black women that I would demonstrate that gentlemanly behavior and character to. They didn't like that. I even had where family members were picking on me for that at the time, back when I was younger. And that built up a high level of resentment where I was being rejected, where I was being separated from them or not considered one of them. I hated that feeling so much that I couldn't be a part of my own, that I could care less about my own. I only cared about being myself and who would accept me as I am. Of course, that leads all the way back to Christ first. Christ accepts me as who I am because he made me as a black man, and I can be proud of that. And, and I, as I've grown to overcome that resentment, I've built a lot more relationships with black people than I've ever had, and, and I find my culture to be beautiful. I've been to Africa, I went to Uganda actually, and I've seen, you know, of course the struggle side of it, but I've also seen the beauty of, I've seen the beauty of their labor, seeing a 10 year old boy carry a bag of potatoes up the highway road. Uh, he, he looked like he was nine or 10 years old and he's dragging his bag of potatoes, but because his family needs food, you see him pressing. I got to witness the high level of praise and worship that in this country you see I'm talking hours of praise and worship non-stop because of the love that they have for God it is beautiful to see that they can show such dedication love and compassion not only for one another but for the Lord Jesus Christ seeing that is beautiful about my culture seeing uh, black history and you'll see it in my video soul uh, of the review of Disney Pixar's soul if you of course check the link in the description or go to the channel you can see that there I talk about the history of black culture as far as jazz music and and blues our influence on blues music rock music I love our influence there even the what seems minuscule but is beautiful is how we conduct ourselves in the barber shop. Yeah, there's some, you know, I guess some aggressive times, but there's also this wholesome unity that makes it a beautiful scene. And, and that's what I love about black culture in and of itself. That's what I love about my black history, if anything, that I would dare talk about as beautiful thing. That's beautiful. Um, even now, you know, I, I've always wanted to grow my hair out and have a ponytail, but I could never do that. That stems from uh, watching Power Rangers, the Green, Green Ranger, him having that ponytail, I've been jealous all my life. But I've always wanted to do that. But now I'm at a place where, because I love my black culture so much, that the way my hair is, I need to, one, learn how to grow it out. Two, I can have my own ponytail that represents me without me trying to look like somebody or something else. So I, I find that to be beautiful. I find that to be truly beautiful. And the art of, 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 of black people is... It's something that's so abstract that nobody can touch. If anything, they like to try and mimic it. And that's something that we see constantly throughout history. They try to mimic it, but you can't do what we do. And, and that's something that I find to be beautiful about being black, being a black man, uh, being a black man in America, having the black history that I have, the good and the bad. That's what I find beautiful about it. Now, this leads me to our next section, and this is talking about my uh, passion of art. I love art. I love literature, I love drawings, I love paintings, I love I love everything about art. Art is such a beautiful, sculptures, I love it all. I, I think that's one of the things that really draws me, uh, or really connects me with my relationship with God is because God is a creator since day one, since Genesis 1-1, creation. That's what he does. And I love that about, I love that about Christ. I love that about watching the rest of the world go on and, and live as it does. I love the art that the world has to portray. Even thinking about this as it came to me doing this video, I spent like the time riding with my dad wanting to help him work at the church and, and looking outside. I just saw the beauty of the design of this world. And I couldn't look at it with resentment. I could only look at it with awe and just think about how creative my God is. And even more so, when I go to put my pencil to the paper and I go to draw a picture, you know, I love the artwork that I do. I love 
watching the artwork on TikTok. I love on on, on on Instagram, seeing different forms of art being portrayed. Facebook, wherever I see art. As you can see behind me, this is my favorite form of art to read about. I love it. And I definitely love the literature of the Bible. It is amazing, those writings. I love the writings that people do in response to the Bible. I think that is beautiful. I even love the creative stories that a lot of people today are writing. Now, I have never read Harry Potter, but I know it is a great form of literature. Uh, I never will read Harry Potter, just a sidebar, uh, but I will respect it as a great form of literature. Uh, it's a great writing. I love several different other forms of writing. I just think it's, I think it's beautiful that we are capable of doing such beautiful and wonderful things. Now, when we talk about the art that God has brought into this world, you know, it all starts since the beginning, uh, the art that he's, he's done. Since Genesis chapter one and two, it's him talking about creating the world and, and uh, it's talking about it specifically in detail from what it needed to survive by bringing light, by bringing the sun, and all of that was organized in the universe for the earth itself to function in its position. Now, slightly going uh, scientific there, but with the way that the earth is placed in its orbit so that it is being maintained, all of that is defined there in chapter one, him bringing life into this world by orchestrating the properties or the, the land and the realms in which these creatures need to exist, designing all of that so that fish could live in the waters, so that, you know, creatures could walk upon the land, the sky in and of itself, with wind being considered for birds to be able to fly, that's a masterful piece of design. And to design the bird's wings to be able to allow them to soar through the sky. If you ever watch them describe the design of animals, their designs are so so specific to fit in the environment in which they live. And, and I think that's such a beautiful thing to, to think that God designed them so specifically, so strategically, so accurately. The accuracy of God's design, I love it. And then it goes into chapter 2, talking about how God made us from the dust of the earth. And he made us in his likeness and in his image. To speak to those specifics in that in Genesis chapter 2 is a beautiful thing. And if we were to go scientific, looking at the anatomical structure of us as human beings, how every piece of us is designed to function properly, thinking of, when you go to think about how the brain sends signals to every part of the body, for it to function that the way is in, the way that it does. When we're talking about the organs doing what they need to do, we're talking about the heart doing what it needs to do, the eyes doing what it needs to do. Uh, you know, the argument about how you can't even bite off your own tongue. Why? Because your body is structured to ensure that you're not doing uh, egregious self-harm. You gotta pass certain limiters to do that in your mind. I'll teach you what they really mean. Go beyond. Which is not a good thing when we're talking about passing your limits. But it's, it's a crazy the, the specifics to our design. The bone structure from little parts that are placed in the knee to ensure that the knee is connected to, to your calf muscles, your calf properly. Those specific designs, designing those bone structures along with those muscle tendons to be able to hold up the entire body. That's, that's amazing to think about the specifics of this design. Now when we go to talk about structures in and of themselves, you see, and I believe it's Genesis chapter 6, where you're going to see Noah uh, design, uh, being taught to design a boat structure. Now of course we can already suspect that they already knew how to make like places to live, but at the same time giving him the metrics, God gave Noah metrics for building a large enough ark to save his family and the animals that were saved in that moment. The specifics of design that God gives. It is amazing. Now we have two off-putting instances, of course, in Genesis that reflect human beings being able to design for themselves. Um, whether or not that goes according to God is the argument that can definitely be placed there. Of course, we know Cain designing, uh, Cain using, a, 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 I believe it was a rock or a club to, of course, kill his brother. And then that leading to his generations becoming the ones to design weapons of warfare. There's a, there's a creativity that Although bad being that it led to so much so many people being killed back then, is a, there's there's a masterpiece to that to at least be recognized. And I love how in Genesis, when you look at after the flood, in Genesis chapter eleven, verse one through nine, you get this beautiful picture of where God is amazed at human beings' ability to create because they were creating the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11. But at the same time, you're taken, he's taken aback because they're building 
because of the reasons that they're building this tower. That's a whole other video, guys. You know, the what God admires about humanity, but what he has to, um, how he, what he has to, you, you, you can, you do, you, um, interrupt into that humanity is doing for their sake so that they're not leading to their own destruction. He is amazed at our creativity, but at times he has to intervene on that. That's a topic for a whole nother video. Again, comment if you want it. If you want a topic about that, comment if you want it. We could talk about it. But it's amazing to think about how how God values our creativity. And all throughout that time, you're just seeing instances of the creativity and, and, and the design ability of not only God, but human beings and reflection of God is, is just an amazing thing. And that's why I love the Bible, man. And that's why I love art. I love, quite honestly, I love anime. Anime, manga are some of my biggest passions. But let me rewind it so that you guys know why. So, of course, I got into, you know, one of the main things that first make an impact on me was Marvel. I loved Marvel heroes. I loved DC heroes. I loved their stories. I, I of course, used to watch the animated series for Spider-Man. We watched the Superman. We watched the Destiny. I watched, you know, all the stuff that would come on for kids TV. Um, and then, after a while of, of watching all that, I got hooked on the Spider-Man. So I was into Marvel Comics, and Spider-Man was the first hero I ever saw as a hero. I thought, Jesus, let's not go there. Jesus is the hero of all heroes. But Spider-Man was that hero for me growing up, you know? And, and, that's, and I didn't even realize it at the time, but it's because of how he carried himself to be that hero. And that's why I paid so much attention to him. He put his life aside to take care of those that weren't going to be able to survive if he didn't intervene. So to see that is is just, for me, is a reflection of Jesus coming down and, and being the Savior that he was. He put his, his divinity aside to come down and be like man, to live as man, to teach man, and to save man, to die on the cross, rise from the dead, and of course go back to be with the Father, but entrust man to take care of themselves with what he's taught and is continuing to teach through his word with the Holy Spirit living within us to make that word come to life within us as we study, read, and teach his word to other people. But seeing that as Spider-Man, like that, that drove me insane. Like I always thought that was a, a wonderful thing, associating that back to the gospel. And then I got into Toonami. I started watching Toonami, of course, for, as we all know, <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, like that was that was it. I was I was sold such so Dragon Ball. Of course, yeah, you watch Pokemon, Digimon. You got into that, but it wasn't sticking. Dragon Ball stuck for me. Dragon Ball Z stuck for me. The starting out with Goku and Piccolo fighting against Raditz, coming against his brother and didn't know he was his brother. Like that whole storyline was amazing. Saiyan Saga, amazing. Namek art, amazing. Frieza Saga, amazing. And on and on and on. I just always love. Dragon Ball. Now, of course, with me watching Dragon Ball, um, I was watching Yu Yu Hakusho, Rurouni Kenshin, Outlaw Star, Sailor Moon. I was watching all those old classics growing up, and I loved them. But the thing that I loved most about them was, unknowingly, I would always associate them back to my faith. You know, looking at Dragon Ball and how with Goku, you see him pushing past his limits to save the people that he loves, but at the same time, not destroying the evil people or cutting himself off from destroying evil so that evil could then turn from their wicked ways. You want that? Look, I've already done a video on Dragon Ball once, but if you want me to do it again and go more in detail, leave it in the comments, guys, and I'll definitely talk about it. I want to talk about Dragon Ball Z even more in detail because I've just been thinking about that so much lately. But yeah, Dragon Ball, man, I'm telling you, it, it's that's awesome to me. You know, looking at Sailor Moon, seeing female heroes do what the guys weren't doing. I was watching Tuxedo Man not do as much as the women. I was like, ah, oh, it's cool to see women, you know, show themselves to be able to be powerful, but yet still be girls. You know, that's the thing about heroes. You know, heroes are heroes, but they're still who they are at the end of the day. And that's what I saw with Sailor Moon was girls are capable of doing these powerful things too. Um, and I love that about that. I love watching Yu Yu Hakusho. I like watching, and, I, and I, I was actually thinking about this earlier, what captured me about Yu Yu Hakusho. You were watching a student master being a student. He was learning a lot. You watched Yusuke Yurimesh, you learned a lot about himself. You watched him go from learning a lot about himself to learning a lot about his own power and what he's capable of to make a difference in the world. And exceeding those limits at the death of Genki so that he could not necessarily become a master, but become that master student that she always saw that he was capable of becoming. 
And of course, we see even more when we find out about, you know, what stems from his history. And he even overcomes that to become stronger, to become a better character, to become a better person, and make a difference in his life and his friends' lives. You see a lot of that with Yu Yu Hakusho. I mean, I love to be watching Rurouni Kenshin, a guy who went from killing thousands of people at a flick of the wrist with that set with that samurai sword. Look, he's the reason your boy started collecting the blades with Rurouni Kenshin because he was the best with it. Now, of course, you watch Power Rangers, they had swords. But when you watch Rurouni Kenshin, Man, this dude was dangerous. For first blade, I'm not gonna kill you, but I'm gonna knock you out without cutting you. <laughs> that got me every time when I was growing up. I thought that was amazing. He was operating at such a level without operating at that level. Oh, that's that's amazing. That speaks to you as a Christian. Like, look, I could tell you all the ways that you're cursed and damned for destruction, but I could say the same thing about myself, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to tell you about the love of Christ and tell you about how he's made a difference in my life and he wants to do the same for you. And instead of watching you die, I would rather help you to live. That's combining there that we're only catching the Dragon Ball Z there for me. That's how I, that's how I picture that stuff, man. It is amazing when you when you look at anime and the stories that they tell. I started from watching anime to be well. Where did it start? I started reading manga. Man, I started reading manga, and you know, when I realized that that's where they started, they write the story first, then they produce anime of it. I needed to get it, and I started getting it ever since. Um, that started actually in high school because there was a guy uh, named Toon, amazing guy. If you could have a friend like Toon, you've done found something precious. I need to call him. I haven't called him in a while. I think I'll, I think I'll call him. No, I'm going to call him. I'm going to call Toon. When you got a friend like that, though, like, he, he was one that, him and his brothers, they started collecting manga. They were known all throughout school as the guys who spent $5,000 on manga. And, it, and instead of feeling like, dang, that's a lot of money, I was like, I'm feeling a challenge right now. I want to have a collection like that. And I started buying manga. He started, he was buying manga, I was buying manga. Uh, he was known as a librarian in high school, so with him being a librarian, you know, he was like, hey, pay me one dollar and you can read as many of my books as you want. You pay him one payment, after that you can read as many of his books as you want without having to make another payment. <laughs> he was just that kind of cool guy. It was, it, he made life simple and worth enjoying. So, like, that, that's what brought me into anime. That's what brought me into manga, was that, that relativity to my faith. And that's why I do this channel in and of itself, is because I know that there's a lot of people out there that read books, that read manga, that read comic books, that watch anime, they watch cartoons, and it has an effect on them and their maturity and their growth in life that's actually more positive than a lot of people give it credit for. And so I do this to show that to the rest of the world, man. I want people to be able to see that, and for those of you that feel like you're by yourself feeling that way, I'm in the house. Christ the Comics is in the house. We're here to talk about these things. So if you have a series that you want to know if Jesus is in it, let me know. Put it in the comments. I'll do a review of it, and we can talk about if that series is, is worth reading. And even more so, can you see God in it? I'm down to do that. Now, let's get into the Christian side of things. This is the core of a course. The, 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 this is, these are the pillars that hold me up. And this is the foundation that, that keeps Kentario alive, keeps Kentario going. And that is Jesus. That is God. That is the Holy Spirit. All three are real. God in heaven, his son sitting beside him on the throne, and his Holy Spirit that has come down to dwell in those that declare that Jesus is Lord and that they repent from their sins and they give their life over to Christ. That Holy Spirit dwells within them. And, 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 and that is who I am. With that being said, the reason that I have my faith is because of the love of Jesus Christ. It's because of his love. Now, I'll, I need to do a whole video talking about love because there's a dichotomy there. There's a, there's a there's the, the demonstration of compassion and, and caringness and, and being there for someone, smiling at them, holding them and loving on them, that, that, that lovey-dovey side to it. But then there's a, that other side to it that's very structured, that's very hard, that's, that has an expectation for you that people aren't talking about when we're talking about me loving you. They just want you to accept everything that's about me, the lovey-dovey, without coming with the discipline that is needed for me to show that I truly love you is by me giving you a level of discipline or even more so discerning things about you. So, like, that's what makes me who I am is I love people. 
I love people. I, I, I'll tell people I work with, I'm like, look, tell me, tell me about you. Tell me, what have you been through? Uh, tell me about the good stuff about you. What are your hobbies? I want to know your story. I think in your story, like one of these manga right here, I'd love to sit and listen. I'd love to sit and listen because you probably have a beautiful story to tell. Good and bad. You have a beautiful story to tell. And I like to listen. But above all else, in the midst of your story, Jesus is looking to, to make his mark in that life. He's looking to not to keep you from be, continuing to be who you are, but to elevate who you are to the next level. He's not looking to, to, to kill you, but he is looking to destroy those things of you that are limiting you from being who you are. Destroy those chains that are bound, binding you from excelling to the next level in life. And, and, and going to the next level. Like, that's why I love the Lord. And that's why I share that love of Christ with everyone that I meet. If, if people who meet me, they'll see that I'm, I'm just a caring, loving person. Always happy and in a great mood. It's one of the reasons that I like Luffy is because Luffy's always smiling and that's myself. I'm always quick to smile and talk about something funny, even if it only makes sense to me. I'll tell you something funny. I, I, that's that's what defines me as me is the love of Jesus Christ, man, and that's that's the most important person in my, in my life. And I want to talk about a couple of points with that about what shapes that my belief. And and of course, yeah, I'm gonna say it straight: it's the entirety of the Bible. I entrust my life to the entirety of the Bible. I have not read the Bible all the way through. What? I'm going to be honest about that. I am currently in Numbers, but one as I am reading. God is manifesting what's happening in these in these chapters to me uh, as, as pictures. I'm seeing the, the story be played out before me, and it, it is amazing. Two, with that, I do know a lot of different segments of the Bible, and I grasp majority of its context. So even when it comes to having a discussion about the gospel, it is a, is it, not saying it's easy for me, but I am able to catch up, follow along, and even bring some more feedback into that conversation. So my faith is definitely strong in the Lord, and there's no shaking it, there's no breaking it, no revealing that science or people or, or no manipulation of the government or people in power or the people who have a voice to make changes to those in power. None of that will influence the change in my faith. I will always be a believer in Jesus Christ, who is the Lord. And so to start that off, got to keep it classic, right? John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ came to die for our sins. He suffered on the cross, giving a live demonstration of the sufferings of sin and what it brings upon you to die, go to hell, take the keys from hell, and bring up souls from hell so that we can have a life as he goes back to live with the Father. He's gone to prepare a place for those that believe in him so that we can have a new home in heaven with him. But not only that, he gives you a charge of the Great Commission. And in this Great Commission, he is charging us to share the gospel. He is charging us to feed the hungry. He is charging us to take care and heal the sick. He is charging us to raise people from the dead. There is a charge to make sure that the gospel and the truth of Jesus is shared across the entirety of the world. That's why, no matter what religion that that are being spoken about, taught about, that people may even still practice or believe in, the gospel going from Genesis to Revelations has existed constantly and has never been debunked, has not been proven to be false, has not been able to be stopped from being spoken. God is king and there's no one that can change that. And that's why I love, and I love the Lord for it. The Lord has always shown himself to be consistent. Now the other thing with that too is, is looking at how not only has he called us to do a great thing, he has gifted us to do a great thing. God has gifted each and every one of us our own particular gifts. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, I do not limit that to your hobbies or what you're interested in or what you became successful with. Or, or I'm not limiting it to that. And what I mean by limiting it to that is God has gifted us to be able to speak words of power, uh, to take authority over things in the spiritual realm, which we cannot which we cannot, and I don't encourage people to just hop into the fire trying to do these things. We cannot handle these things without Jesus. Even the disciples, even though God told them to go out and were equipped to do it, there were times where they struggled, even though they walked with Jesus, to cast out demons. And, and he challenged them by saying, O ye of little faith, 
but it wasn't to demit, to belittle them, but it was to challenge them to build on the faith that he has given them, that measure of faith that God has equipped them with, to then get to a place where they were finally doing it, and they came back to celebrate right and even then Jesus still told them it's like that's not the main thing to celebrate but to celebrate the salvation of those that believe that Jesus Christ believes that he is Jesus and give their life to him and, and entrust him to be there to be Lord and I'm paraphrasing that verse completely but that's that's the powerful thing about being gifted is that we have the opportunity to demonstrate what they put as, a, as the mark for that miracles in the world so that people come to know who Christ is a lot of people like to now limit that to dialogue, but there's more that the Lord is looking to do if we only show ourselves willing. <laughs> and just to, to be myself, I associate that immediately to X-Men. Having the mutant gene, or has, as Charles Xavier calls it, the X gene. You know, we have that, and God has equipped us with that so that we can go and demonstrate the power of God into the world. For those of you that don't understand that that reflection because they think that a mutation is is a negative thing that's something that's been implanted in the their genes since early times since the beginning of time for them on earth um there were just to paraphrase here a little bit there were celestials the celestials manipulated the human genes so that over time their powers would manifest at a certain point that's why the earliest recollection is found with, uh, I think her name is Selena, who was believed to be, who was immortal and was very vampire-like. And then second is Apocalypse, when he first made his appearance in Egypt at that time. So those are the earliest remnants of mutants becoming known. But they were minimal, they weren't large in number as they are seen at, like, when it became popular in the 90s. When X-Men and, and all of that became popular in the 90s, even to now. You know, the numbers are increasing. Uh, it seems as though they're reversing what happened in House of Them. <laughs> For my comic book fans that know what I'm talking about. But that's that's really what I came to share today. And then to be gifted by God is a huge thing for me. To be gifted by God, I, I, I trust and believe in God having equipped me for healing. Um, and due to what I experienced when I was younger, I could share that in another time. But what I experienced when I was younger really turned me off to doing healing. Uh, because someone that I loved who I went to heal didn't get healed uh, even though he was an old guy you know I was a kid I was thinking I could just go lay hands on him and he'll be fine God will do it but it didn't happen that way and that really hurt my faith in the ability to heal so I, I'm very hesitant to lay hands on people which is something that you want to do you don't want to just go lay hands on everybody and say well God empowered me to heal so let me heal everybody it don't work that way you got to go according to the voice and the will of the Lord to operate in these giftings you can't just do what you want with the power of God you have to trust in God to do what God has commanded us to do. Some other major things that I believe in, in from the word and the truth of the word is the importance of repentance and the importance of forgiveness. If you're going to come and follow Christ, you have to be prepared to give your life over to him. And you do that by turning away from those things that are wicked and coming to follow the Lord. Dario, there are some comic books and manga and things that don't represent God properly. Why would you still read them? Why don't you turn away from them? I don't turn away from them because I find Christ in them. Now, there was a time, yeah, where I was just collecting any old thing, and those things were not appropriate for me to collect. I will not deny that, and I won't sit here and be fake and act like I, at that time, was thinking about Jesus. There were times where I was collecting books and wasn't thinking, thinking twice about Jesus being a part of that. I was doing it for me, just to have more of my collection. But in a turning point, that's where I began to shift the focus of my collecting to making sure that I was getting something that would speak to Jesus and me. And if I were to go do one of these videos, I can speak to Jesus for you. That's that's one of the major things I'm talking about, repentance. But when I'm encouraging people to repent, there is a change that happens in you when you repent. It's not about coming to Jesus and, and, and then I'm just going to shed these pieces as I go. It's a, you know, I'm done with this. I am moving on from this. And I speak that over myself and anyone that's listening right now, that, that we repent from the sins that we have committed ourselves to and have been practicing uh, those things that are aware and unaware. Because we, repentance is so important. If you can't turn from your wicked ways, how then can you expect the grace of God to have its full effect? It's not that the grace of God has not been bestowed, but the grace of God having its full effect. Do we yet sin that grace may abound? God forbid. That is not the will of God that we abuse the grace that's being demonstrated, that we abuse the death of Jesus Christ on the cross so that we can just live any way that we want to. That is a whole argument in and of itself because people think, well, you can't be, you can't say that I need to work to demonstrate that I love God. But here's the truth. If you love God, you will do the work. 
you will labor to change who you are and it won't be a burdensome labor it'll be a beautiful labor and that's one thing that actually my apostle apostle Vicky Adams my father taught me is is that when you look at the old when you look at the Old Testament Genesis the labor that Adam was charged to do wasn't a burden when he was charged to do it in the beginning but when he sinned eating of the apple most of all being disobedient against God then God made the labor that was otherwise burdenless burdensome so that's where man became, you know, burdened by having to work, by having to work. Working um, for the Lord is not a burden. I find that to be joyous. I find that to be a joyous thing. And that's where I would say that I myself am a bondservant to the Lord. What is a bondservant? That means that you choose to remain in service to this God. I choose to remain in service to Jesus. Jesus isn't forcing me to serve him. I choose to serve him. And I have to demonstrate that as his servant, as long as I'm going to, as they say, if you're going to live in my house, you're going to abide by my rules. As long as I'm going to serve under the Lord, I'm going to meet the expectations that my master has for me. I'm more than happy to do that. Now that leads me to another side, and this is not to go into that hole. You want to talk about slavery with me? Let's do it. When it comes to slavery, man, I'll tell you right now, slavery in the Bible is not a bad thing to talk about. I say it's not a bad thing to talk about. There are instances where slavery and people are being abused and manipulated and hurt and killed and, and killing off their babies by feeding them to alligators. We see a lot of that happening. But then we see God give instruction for how to handle yourself when someone's a slave. Now, when it comes to that, God is giving instructions on how you can properly repay your debts without it being a, a without it leading to you being a corrupt human being when you do it. Because there are consequences when a master abuses their servant, as demonstrated in Genesis, as demonstrated with how Jesus is for us. Jesus doesn't abuse us. If anything, Jesus labors alongside us. That's why he says he's yoked up together with us in the New Testament. Because Jesus is going to hit the ground running with us. Jesus isn't, isn't just watching us suffering and saying, you know, I taught you better than that. Keep going. I taught you better than that. Keep going. He's laboring with you. That's why he sent the Holy Spirit so that it can labor with you, right? And and that's what it means to be a servant of the Lord. You want to go deeper in that, you already know what to do. So, the last thing I want to leave you guys with is forgiveness. Forgiveness is the most important. One of the most important things because Jesus went to die on the cross to forgive us of our sins. Because our sins are an unbearable thing and we've always for generations have tried to figure out how can I forgive myself? How can I find forgiveness with my family? How can I find forgiveness with other people? There's no way that I can do that. There's no amount of sacrifice or offering that I can make that will be enough. There's no amount of slavery servitude that I can give to pay back all the debt that I've built up from my sins. There's no amount of waiving these fees. I work in the insurance and people call to have their late fees waived and they try to justify it. There's no amount of that that you can do to, to in this world to find forgiveness. But the true forgiveness of your sins is found in Jesus and what he's done on the cross. The debt has been paid. You have been forgiven. And it is up to you to live as somebody that has been forgiven. It's up to you to demonstrate that same forgiveness to other people who otherwise, whether or not, are deserving of that forgiveness from you. So that you can live free. Forgive them. So that you can live free. You just need to forgive them. Repent so that the weight of your sins is released from you. Accept the forgiveness so that you're not harboring the, the weight of those sins in your heart because you haven't forgiven yourself. Be forgiven, forgive others, and be free. That way, you can demonstrate the love of Christ as freely as you can. I still have my own personal bondages, I still have my own personal struggles, but I do know that by forgiving yourself and forgiving others and by dedicating yourself to the Lord, that you will be able to be the best you you've ever seen. No amount of, uh, of, of patriotism will do that, no amount of friendship will do that, no amount of manga will do that, no amount of dogs, wife, children, perfect life, none of that will do that for you outside of Jesus, guys. And that's why I do this channel. This is who I am. Thank you for coming to meet Kitario today. And y'all have a blessed one. Peace.